everybody, and welcome back to another side quest of Casual Master Quest. Uh, I don't have a tagline here because E3 is just bewildering me with all this audio sensory information. Uh, almost ASMR, ASMR worthy. You already uh, lost it. I already lost it. I am Tyler of Veneto. Thank you for watching or listening to this show. Over here in the corner, I have a guest. Yes, our very first guest on Casual Master Quest. Over in the corner here, we have Brandon Thresher. How's it going? It's going good. I just woke up. You just woke an hour up. Ago. Oh man, you you so you woke up and you got hit with all this Nintendo and Sony stuff. Yeah, I uh, I work till seven in the morning, and it's about a forty minute drive back home, and uh, it's hard. Is it? Yeah, I feel you, man. Like you are living the life of having two jobs yes because I, yep sorry no god i was gonna say i work uh another job and it usually runs five to nine mm -hmm. get back home enough time to take a shower and then have to be at the hotel wow uh i mean i know the feeling pretty much you know i work all day as a truck driver throughout the weekdays and then on the weekend i get to do pizza delivery although very uh i didn't announce this to anybody i actually put my two weeks in on saturday so nice. i my last day officially i won't be working that day would be actually on my wedding so i put my two weeks on hey, i'll you know, be there yep that, that's that's good very good uh what you've been playing man what have i been playing nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> uh, got a life. uh guild wars 2 dying light starcraft 2 and uh um elder scrolls legends Elder Scrolls Legends. Now, what is that on? Is that the phone game? That's phone and PC. Okay. Uh, my, I myself, I, uh, I've been pretty much playing a lot of Pokemon Go for the most part, and a lot of Persona Four. Man, like you, you've seen that uh, that PS Vita Nick got me. It was yeah. it was a dust bin collecting object thing. I've been playing it so much. I bought a case for it. Like I had you in mind, and I was getting ready to buy an Am Amazon Echo. Yeah. And uh, I had it in my Amazon list. And then yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I'll get the Vita case too. I only end up getting the Vita case. I didn't actually buy an Amazon Echo. It's like I had to make my choice there. I had to pick one or the other, you know, this nice $50 with, you know, the light bulb and all that stuff for 80 bucks or 12 bucks for a Vita case. You know, I wasn't was disappointed. Difference. It was very durable. Like I, I wouldn't toss it like a football, but I would toss it over to the other side of the bed. So, you know, it's and more let comfort. it bounce off. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Man, I'm still scared about my computer screen, man. Just wombling around or rumbling around, moving around the USB cables, getting things set up, and all of a sudden the the monitor freaking falls off. I was like, ah. You but, said you were gonna go relax after that. I definitely don't blame you. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, E3, E3 is still upon us. It, we are hit with like the fourth, fifth wave at this point. Uh, last less, one. Well. Is there more after this? Nope. There's the treehouse going on right now, and then uh, I think it's done. Sweet. Thank God. No no offense. I, I've said it for the record. I hate E3, man. I hate E3. People say it's like Christmas to me. It's like <sighs> Chris, Christmas, you're supposed to have fun. This is the holiday shopping two days before Christmas. You just you got to take it all in and plan and try to get excited, but you're just so stressed. I love but, E3. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody loves E3. I hate it, but uh, screw it. We got to actually start talking. Sony right. and Nintendo. Although, I know you want to talk up a little bit about a certain other press conference. I just conference. want to talk to you about it, so we don't need to keep it in here, but... Okay, I mean... Uh, you, you, I can you, just make my quick points. Well, you're excited about uh, stuff from Bethesda. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I've got my list there. Let me just read down it real quick. The unimportant one is uh, Rage 2. It just looks fun. That's sad, man. You know, don't pick on Rage 2. They uh, they got a forced announcement from a Canadian Walmart. They they had to put something out. Yeah, it looks fun though. I, I was um I was pleasantly surprised at what the gameplay looked like. Um, I might not pick it up day one, but if it ever goes on sale, kind of purchase, you know. Um, but the the big. Well, here, let me go down to the bottom of that list. Uh, Starfield, you know yeah. me. I'm always looking for a good space combat kind of game. And, yeah, uh, but this is like Sea of Thieves, but in space at this point. You're going to buy yourself a fancy ship and just try to travel the... Well, not the seas. I guess the seas of space? Well, that's Starlink. 
Hmm. <laughs> Starfield, we don't have any information on. Oh, okay. Well, so I, I can't give anything to compare to try to dissuade yeah. you. But it's probably uh, probably pretty similar. But, anything um, else from Bethesda? Well, let's see. Let's go down least important. Elder Scrolls Six. The least important. Wow. Lay, I want to the heat. I wow. want to get excited for it, but I feel like they just put that in because they just wanted something. They they wanted people to get excited with a, a buzzword. Yes. Like you saw the trailer for trailer i say trailer very loosely uh the announcement for it it just showed high rock or wherever the ah! f- wherever that was um and uh elder scroll six that's all we got to see uh what about uh elder scrolls uh blade or fallout 76 uh blade looks fun i've already pre-registered for it on my phone and computer so hopefully i can get into that um i'm but always got it pre-ordered with- the person that likes to pirate oh, i mean uh borrow every single game on the internet you're gonna it's, pre-order it it's free oh it is oh okay <laughs> um then, that that's fair okay fine whatever of course if it's free then it's acceptable whatever and so um i'll switch your thought oh it, it looks like a fun rogue like i'm not excited about the base building aspects but you gotta have something to get in there to reason to go exploring in the dungeons i guess um and then fallout 76 i'm excited for and not at the same time it uses a lot of the same elements from fallout 4 it looks like really yeah a follow so, game using its own game mecha- okay no no not mechanics like same guns i mean new enemy types and stuff but it looks like a port that they added online to and put into a new area mm. So you're telling me you don't have any real excitement for it? I mean, it, it'll be fun if the multiplayer is fun. Like that's its big selling point, I think. You know, you Wait, said Fallout out, 76 has multiplayer. In, yes. In it? Yes. Okay. Uh, that, it it seems we don't have much information on it, but from what I've gathered, it seems a lot like um, Dark Souls multiplayer. Oh mixed. man, you're, you're you're totally getting me less excited. <laughs> Well, it seems like any person that you come up into the world is think of it like a hundred person MMO. Okay, a hundred people get falling, uh, they dr- get dropped from a plane onto an island. Right. Yeah, and then you have to kill everybody. And um, you shoot BB guns at each other. Right. Um, but the world is so big that you build these bases. Right. You got to collect resources and build bases. Okay. And um, the the purpose of the game is you're rebuilding the wasteland. And so you'll come across someone building their base and be like, oh, it's a nice hubcap you got there. And then you can either, you know, trade with them, kill them or, you know, work with them and they can show you where to find one or. But, you know, this is all speculation for that. So we'll see. We'll see as more announcements come. Okay. Be interesting. Anything else you want to point out from the other ones or the other uh, conferences besides the big ones? Um. Anthem looked fun. I won't buy it. Uh, <laughs> you don't want the Destiny clone? No. I have Destiny 2 now, apparently, from the Humble Bundle, but I haven't oh, even yeah. put it on. <laughs> haven't even tried it yet. <laughs> um, sea of Solitude, like I said, I'm always looking for a good space or pirate game. Yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk looked fun. I was a big fan of The Witcher, so fine. Uh, Star Citizen. I- I'm seeing a big... Uh, Relation between a lot Wait, of the games that I you say Star Citizen, yes, there's Starfield, yeah. Starlink, and Star Citizen. I was gonna say, uh, Star Citizen, I was talking about those somebody else, I think it was Nick, uh, that they had a new recent uh update to uh either Patreon or I, I think it's like a Kickstarter extra goal or something that you, where you can donate. I it was either like 25 or 50 thousand dollars to get the next tier of a ship. So I mean, yeah, for the, the the big bad right now is the drop, you know, twenty five plus thousand dollars to get it. So, well, I mean, I can I, get two or three if you want. I I say, there's gonna be a couple of jumps we're gonna have to make for that. We might have to pull out, you know, a couple of house mortgages, some loans, That'd get be- some liens on the tractor. I wonder how many loan officers have to turn people down because their reason for a loan is for a video game. <laughs> <laughs> they need a sixty-three dollar loan for a game. Well, I'm thinking more like for this, like, oh, I need twenty-five thousand dollars so I can. I'm building a new spaceship. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fly it in this game. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, all right. So Sony, 
Yes. Did you watch the actual direct or stream? Stream. I did. Sorry. Okay. So the first thing we got to see, besides the usual rambling of, uh, I, th- I believe it was Sony CEO, we got to see a spotlight shoot down on this lone man sitting in the left corner of this area, wearing a hoodie, trying to be all dark Assassin's Creed style with a banjo. Yeah. With a banjo. <laughs> and that, a, not a guitar. Not a you know an accordion, I guess. I don't know. A freaking banjo. And he's just sitting there for five minutes. Like I feel like they're trying to stall. Like he had an earpiece and they're like, just keep playing. They just solo it up, man. Just, <laughs> when does we're not this ready end? with the trailer. We're rendering, man. We're rendering. Okay. We're, what did that lead into? I don't think I put that on my notes. That led into Last of Us Part Two. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I remember I was thinking, oh, this is gonna lead into Red Dead Redemption or some old Western kind of game where you know the banjo would be irrelevant. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, he played the same song that Ellie played, I believe, uh, on a guitar in the first teaser for this game, like years, uh, like last year, the year before, where she was just playing the, on the guitar. But I was thrown out. It's like, why a banjo? Did right. the guitar break and you know they went to the nearest music store and they're like, oh god, this is banjo. <laughs> they just found someone on the side of the road. Can you play the banjo? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I mean, I believe he was the music director or something like that for this mm-hmm. game. So, you know, side of the street, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, if you're gonna hate on Naughty Dog. Uh but yes, we got uh Last of Us Part Two, uh a, a bigger, longer view on it. Uh showed, you know, Ellie sitting at this weird makeshift ballet no, not ballet yeah, like yeah, like a, a bar slash some kind of ball dance thing and gets somewhat hit on a guy she kind of brushes off gets to see uh, a girl who i presume she really likes because she i would say about 30 seconds in begins dancing and then starting to french her and they you know they're trying to all talk friendly and went out to each other and then she immediately suffers ptsd i thought though that that was such a good transition because my mind immediately went to her, you know, she starts breathing heavy and moaning. And I was like, oh, f- er. I thought it was a great transition, though, because my mind went to, you know, they're making love. You hear that heavy breathing and all of that. And I'm thinking, are we going to see this on a E3 presentation? And then I know, it her, I say, how long does this go? Because I'm going to need at least five, ten minutes. What's going on here? And it was just a stark contrast between the two that I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then we got to see some gameplay. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I remember my first kiss too. Jeez, actually, no that that would have been at least her second kiss uh, canonically because there was a DLC that uh, Ellie got where she had her first kiss with a uh, also a lady. So uh, yes, we got to see a bunch of uh, Ellie gameplay. I would say about five minutes or so it was very seamless and uh, mm-hmm. got a transition. No uh, HUD or you know or no HUD besides like a little health bar in the corner. Now I wonder if that's supposed to be what it's like for the actual game, or if they're just putting it on in minimal mode to try to show you know you don't as have to look at anything else. You don't need a mini map or anything. You just got to walk around. Your environment is your map, which you know you could be true. You don't get a mini map in real life. <laughs> <laughs> mini maps are for suckers. Walking uh, around with your phone GPS. Where am I? Oh God! Trying to sneak, you know, looking at her iPhone. Uh, oh gosh, there's an enemy there. dot for an enemy on there. Oh gosh! But uh, I mean, the the guy, the combat was similar. Honestly, yeah. like there's a couple of indi- uh, additions, and it kind of felt weird because I couldn't tell when was when it was a cutscene and when it was actually like gameplay, like you were doing something because. It's just, just like everything seems cir- circumstantial because, you know, there's a point where she's hiding under a truck and it's like, did she intentionally get in the truck because we got railroaded under there or did we just happen to go under the truck by coincidence and then it sparked an event where somebody would slowly lean and look under it? There's, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say it was all gameplay. You, you really? Okay. So you're telling me that there's potentially in this one area so many different ways that they could have interacted with the environment because there was another time that where this big bad guy just grabs her by the throat and picks her up. I'm like, okay, she's gonna, he's going to choke her and throw her. He does not do that. Well, yes, he does. He throws her through this glass display case right to his right. And it's like, when's if he did that, like, maybe you know 15 feet away would he throw her through something else would he just toss her to the walls yeah where ellie uh dropped the ball and got an axe no not but it was a big giant hammer 
had fall. Okay. <laughs> Asni, uh, but yes, we got to see a little bit more. Uh, no sh- sign of Joel. No, nothing at all. Which Not was- in the bar scene or the... Uh, I mean, the, when we oh. saw the teaser thing from a year ago, it did show Joel coming in on her playing the uh, the not banjo, the guitar, and uh, so he technically should be in here. Maybe it's a flashback or something like that because right. what we saw in the teaser and what we saw her because she looks much older. She's drinking booze. Like, I mean, to be fair, there's not very many rules in that society. That, so. That's true, but it's clear that at least two, three years have passed, if not more. Just, just how she looks a little bit more grown up she's seen some stuff she's got some uh, dirt under her eyes and blood all over her face you know whenever she's imagining her second or potentially more kisses uh is there anything yeah i mean this game was always like an instant buy for me anyways just because i love last of us but right is is there anything that you noticed that was uh off-putting about it not off-putting but something you said earlier um with the combat it definitely was a very Ellie style of combat. Yeah. Like you could definitely tell that they brought a lot of her skill set back from the first game. So I appreciated that they didn't just try to combine hers and Joel's together. It, it definitely it felt like a more, uh, I'm not infinitely strong. Mm-hmm. So I got to kind of play like a uh, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider style. You know, you got to sneak you around that on chat. Tomb Ra- three. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, you know, has the bow now, which she always had the bow, you know, halfway into the game anyways, but it's just weird because I'm so used to uh, originally in Last of Us, when he plays Joel, it's more like you hide somewhere and then you either choke him out immediately or just shoot him down. Yeah, And you technically could hide around in Last of Us, but it felt like they were trying to intentionally outmaneuver you in terms of having more enemies. And I mean, that's what it looks like in this scene. Yeah, more screwy uh, situations where you were, you know, done for if you made a bad move. Like there was a moment where the person played the character was going to go for a sneak kill, but somebody marches in, and so the guy or girl runs back. back. The person obviously looks at her, but apparently the viewpoint was not far enough to recognize. Oh, there's a bad guy over there, or Ellie's over there, and we still don't know what the heck's going on. Apparently, there's some kind of weird religious cult that is uh they love hanging people but wait before we hang you let's disembowel you then hang you i mean that that's a rough way it's like pick one or the other there's no need to do both unless you like trying to do exterior design i mean what kind of decoration is that no signs of zombies no the the greatest greatest enemy right now is uh man which is uh i mean the end of last of us kind of had a working on uh the zombie problem sure maybe they were able to do it that that's also very possible we're you know maybe after a post-apocalyptic uh post zombie end world uh level stage it's just it's weird because the zombies in that game didn't really play a major role like the the prime major role it was more the conflicts of what was left over with civilization Mm-hmm. almost every single time now zombies were always a driving factor but it wasn't always the big thing but we're, i haven't seen any driving factors yet i i'm remembering a scene when i was watching i think it was you playing mm-hmm. last of us when i was over there of uh you were in a school or something and you okay. had to get the key cards and you had this big big guy chasing you down yes, while you trying to get i it. remember that guy and that's oh all i can think gosh. of we see zombies were that prevalent <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah that, that that's 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 a prime evil right there jeez uh, but anyway, uh, that's just what i remembered anything else you uh want to talk about that uh for the last of us i don't think yeah. so uh i do believe that we did not actually get a street date for that just yet just you know coming out hopefully sometime next year hopefully well usually when they don't if they're confident they'll put a date on it this year or early next year if they're uh you know working on it almost done they'll put you know 2019 you don't say a date i'm guessing 2020 at this rate 2021 oh gosh don't say that that's kingdom hearts (laughs) 4 no it's like the kingdom hearts 4 is like 2030 uh 3.1 oh gosh final remix remake plus uh next game is ghost of tsushima yeah now we heard a good amount of talk about the game but we didn't get to actually see any gameplay footage until last night we did get to hear someone play a single pan flute 
thing recorder i don't know that's true uh apparently they did not want to be outdone by the banjo so they played a majestic japanese musical instrument for another five minutes while they got you know preloaded the uh cinematic cutscene that was behind them open field you know it looked great it looked like somebody like a twenty thousand dollar uh animated uh wallpaper at that point but you know it's okay so they played more music, turned to impress us, which, no offense, that flute solo is probably more impressive to me than the entirety of Ubisoft, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, EA uh, got beat by the banjo, Ubisoft got beat by the uh, Japanese flute, but yeah. we got to see uh, the first beginning, I would assume the beginning, of uh, Ghost of Tsushima, where we have a samurai of the Bushido uh, returning back to his homeland that's being invaded by the, the mongolians or the mongols sorry so i guess uh that would make it a very very long time ago obviously this would be you know ancient china ancient japan which makes sense because that's when samurais were big uh a lot of gore uh, mm-hmm. n- n- not ridiculous gore but you know a guy swings a, a samurai sword and it makes a connection with a, a limb L- limb doesn't immediately fly off but blood definitely goes everywhere it's like hanging there yeah it's ridiculous and you know the the first thing we see is him marching up to the mongolians going hey that's enough you go home now it's like okay that's gonna work yep we're gonna resolve this by talking like an action from the 80s okay sure the mongolians like we suddenly speak japanese now we don't going to kill you and you know one marches forward and he does like a flash blade attack straight out of his sheath and kills him in one shot slashes into like the back of another and then you know kicks one over and just no i think he backstabs one too even just right through the the back through the gut sticking out oh yeah yeah coming through the back Uh i'm trying to remember the trailer (laughs) and then then, you know he meets uh looks like somebody else from uh, a different clan of some sort it's like oh the monk's in trouble let's go save him so you know we got archer lady and uh samurai dude you know it's like a happy hero go west young goku story going on here and you know they get 10 feet and it's like oh we're gonna turn this into a stealth mission for three seconds it's like okay sure let's attack them together so you know you, you this part kind of freaked me out because i like the combat this their attempt to do something stealthy just seemed silly like a samurai trying to be sneaky it just doesn't seem right i i noticed when he was walking on the roof he was making so much noise in game and none of the enemies i know like the, the, noticed the mongol is down there you know you hear him on his bamboo shoes pressing against the bamboo roof going <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You know, i'm so stealthy let me show my grappling hook which he has a grappling hook bless him throws it against the roof then almost spider-man style tries to jump into the wall but somehow magically does not make a noise he like quietly slightly like bounces and then climbs up clambers over the, the roof and then uh apparently they won't notice him until he drops down and uh shanghai's uh, no no pun intended uh right through the guy's chest again and uh, eventually after that and this i think this one scene i thought was probably the best thing i saw so far was when uh the clan member of the the rival clan drops her bow and then proceeds to do a samurai sword fight like mm-hmm. right there into like the sunrise slash sunset with and all the cherry, leaves cherry blossom fields everywhere like this is metal gear solid three final <laughs> fight like we just needed snake eater playing seriously in a bum, world. Bum, bum, bum. Ba, ba, da. and they're just duking it out and I thought it was cool, but I wasn't impressed by the combat style because I had no idea what was going on. There was no like suggestion, like no tutorial. So we didn't know, like for all we know, that could have been like a 10 minute cutscene right there. From the way that it looked. And again, this is all speculation. It looked like it was kind of set up like um, Skyward Sword where okay. you had to wait and time your enemies moves to make your moves. Or you can go on the offensive if you wanted, but then if they block you, you know. Right. You Parry was really heavy in that. <laughs> it looked um, a lot like an actual like fighting game, like Street Fighter or something. Or like Mario Ace Tennis or Mario Tennis Ace. Yeah. That is a fighting game. I'm not kidding, man. It's fighting with the internet. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Uh, 
reminds me of the old joke. I like them. I was gonna make it when you're bringing up uh, Elder Scrolls. You know, like uh, I'll never finish Elder Scrolls Six, but don't worry, neither will Bethesda. So right, I know, right? Uh, OC joke, do not steal. But another thing I'd like to point out with Ghost of Shu- uh, Tsushima, the beginning. He gets on his horse. He's running through these fields, which go for what appears to be miles. And as Jeff Gersman of Giant Bomb was pointing out, he was waiting for like the pop in, you know, from the distance because everything seems so detailed. But the draw distance can only go so far without taking too much of a hit on the computer. He couldn't see it. Neither could I. Everything looked detailed like crazy from like half a mile, a mile away. And I, like even the trees, the grass, everything looked well drawn and it stayed that way all the way through. I don't remember which game during E3 was talking about it, but they were just talking about how rendering distance improvements have been made so much. You can see storms, you know, miles out into the distance. I think it was fallouts, but hmm. they just have had made such improvements for rendering distance that is insane. So that's definitely a good example of it. So, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, is it a buy? Is it a rent? Is it a I'll pass? On sale. On sale? It's like, how much on sale are we talking here? Well, all right, here, let, let me rephrase it. It's, it's a game I would watch you play. It's a game? Okay. Yeah. So, like, like <laughs> Detroit, you know, it looks good. It looks fun. Not really my style, but I loved watching people play it. It's okay. I don't think I've bought a sucker punch game at full price since they've been created. So, oh, well, uh, the next game. Oh, I was going to say, I like it. I don't think it'd be a game I'd buy. I feel like it'd be a game that I'd buy and I really would appreciate, but I don't know. I'd be hesitant on it. I don't think it'd be something I could watch, though. One of like my, f- it, sorry. No, I was going to say it's one of those games that I'd fall asleep watching. One of my favorite games when I was younger, and I can't even remember the name of it anymore. That's a great game, then. Yeah. Um, it was a Xbox game, I think, and PlayStation 2. I was say, you're, you're not going to get me if it's Xbox. But um, basically, you went through and you had telekinesis, pyrokinesis, um, mind control, um, and stuff like that on your left hand. And then you had a gun on your right hand, and you had to go In through. Bioshock? No, no. Although Bioshock, okay. I will too. say you. No, it was before Bioshock, and I wish I could remember it, but that's not important. But anyway, I feel like I know what game you're talking about too. Now it's gonna freak me out because psyops. Oh, that's psyops. It. Yes, people were totally thinking, and I'm assuming you're trying to do a sweet transition over to the next game, Control. Oh, is well, wait, did I miss a game on my list? Well, uh, Control for uh yes oh well well no a uh, ghost of tsushima to control control is another game that came out i wasn't sure if we're actually going to be done yeah with ghost I, of- i'm actually oh sorry yeah no go ghost, ahead if we're done i can move on but we're totally on to the uh, this one but yeah so with psyops that that was a game i really enjoyed playing and i'm excited for control like that and this is what i thought you were saying this is a game that i would actually buy you know i wouldn't want to watch somebody play it really because it gave me so much prey vibes and no offense uh pray pray vibes are not good vibes for me right uh i mean it's behind the people or the people behind this game are also the guys that made max Payne, alan wake and then quantum break so it's like they know how to do good uh cg fmv style gaming so it's gonna look great i just don't know how well or how much i would enjoy it and quite frankly I'm hesitant on that kind of stuff, but right. you, you think this would be something you'd enjoy playing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's just my style of game. I don't know. I like games like that. Like, I loved all the Bioshock games and all of that. So hmm. Hmm. similar to both of those. Now, this is a little story I have told people time and time again. The first horror game that I have ever played was Resident Evil on the PlayStation. It was played, in fact on your playstation while you you had a playstation over at the house that having a playstation (laughs) well we lived on uh fillmore place or you lived at fillmore place and i was visiting one day and upstairs you had a playstation with like a bunch of like bootleg games or something like that on the you know those uh cd rack oh yeah i know like my dad had that for us i remember well, you had Resident Evil. I tried playing it. The first zombie came towards me. I couldn't handle the tin controls, panicked, hit the power button, and then I never touched a, a horror game until Dead Space. So me and Resident Evil don't get along all that well. I had come back to play Resident Evil 5 
Uh, it's weird because everybody was like, Resident Evil 4 is where it's at. I still haven't touched it. We, we, you and I have played a ton of Resident Evil 5. Yeah. Chris, Sheva, Sheva. And, uh, you know, of course, Resident Evil 7 was my big deal for a good while. But uh, Resident Evil 2 is not a game that, I mean, I've heard, I've seen, but I never played it. And so I didn't have that much interest when it came out or being announced for a remaster. Yeah, me neither. I, I mean, people were excited. People were clamoring for this, I guess. But it was just not the group that I follow or I'm right. in. I mean, you see, it's not even on my list here. So, Yeah, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's supposedly coming out January 25th uh, next year. So next year. Yeah, uh, 2000. Well, I mean, yeah, no, January 25th of this year. It was out five months ago. Uh, The next one, I guess, would be, in fact, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, which uh, we saw Mm -hmm. at least two other trailers almost similar to this played already. I saw Square Enix and then on Microsoft. Yeah, I I was surprised. Um, You know, I thought when they showed the trailer for Kingdom Hearts, it was going to be the Elsa Frozen trailer again. And you just come up and it's Sora's. Uh, pirate. As a pirate, yeah. So, speaking of pirate games, what do you think? Uh, is a pirate worthy? Kingdom Hearts, yeah. Kingdom Hearts, think, Pirates yeah, of the Caribbean, unless it comes out on PC. Wait, it, you tell oh. me, oh, you meant for seafaring. <laughs> I thought you were talking about pirating. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> oh, jeez, Brandon, gosh, Did you don't say that out loud. Too you already loudly. called me out on it. I don't know what you're talking about. You would never pirate a single thing. Unless it's Kingdom Hearts 3 Pirates of the Caribbean World. Uh, so we got to see a couple. Yeah, what's up? Oh, I was just, I just remembered the boat battles in it. Are you talking about uh, three Kingdom or two? Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, yeah. Battles. Where they had like a hundred cannons on one side, and you just push yeah. a button, you just shoot like a hundred cannonballs at another ship. So, uh, what uh, Black Flag should have been. <laughs> no, but, Black Flag was actually a lot of fun. I, I know, I know. I, I'm just messing. I didn't even but, uh, play Black Flag for the Assassin's Creed part. I just played it, played it for the ship shanties. <laughs> it, it, there is one thing I'd like to point out, though, is it looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, the level of detail. People actually are starting to compare, like, characters that you see compared to them in the movie. Like, uh, the char- uh, main character from Tangled. Apparently, it looks a lot better in the cutscene for uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 than in the movie, uh, which mm-hmm. I was I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that, that, that's, that's fair enough. And, of course, uh, we get to see a bunch more uh, games, or worlds, rather. The Pirates of the Caribbean one, they did an excellent, excellent care to detail with it. Mm-hmm. It looked fantastic, man. And it's so weird because I'm just I'm so used to the cartoony bullcrap that I'm used to with Kingdom Hearts one and two, and so having a realistic cartoony thing all the time, I don't I, right. I don't know like they didn't have to go that far. I would have been okay with <laughs> uh, a beta quality level game, I guess. Right? You just play it for the story. If the gameplay looks great, then great. If and. I mean, to be fair, we've been waiting for this game for, what, 15 years almost? A little bit less, but not 15 years. Uh, 14 years. Four, 13, 14 years. And so I guess we should uh, hope for the best that it looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. But I will say one thing. You, you mentioned there's a bunch of new worlds announced. Yeah. I'm not very hip on Monster Sora. Really? He, look, he looks furry. For, really? <laughs> Are I you mean, calling calling him a furry i don't know it's just that that was me i didn't like it much but don't worry like i'm not feeling good. hip on the uh the tor- uh, toy story sora either the problem is though everybody that keeps looking at toy story sora and his like attacks and all that is like oh it looks like the best I'm like, eh, okay sure i mean right. the, the pirates of caribbean one looks great uh i don't remember specifically what he looks like in uh frozen which is still be i think he just me. had a coat on yeah, just he has the 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 old Kingdom Hearts two thing with the uh, heavy jacket on. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it's still weird that they actually did Frozen. Yeah, I mean they did say that they're going to focus on more newer films or Disney movies that came out. So it's at the same time they also have Hercules and Toy Story. And no offense, Toy Story is a little bit old. So is Hercules. So it's like at this point, it's like what are you going to do next? Snow White. Snow White's gonna. I think Snow White's their first one. One of their first ones. I was really hoping to see, and I know that it's much better as a pre-release hype. 
like yeah. as we get closer to the date i was really hoping to see a hint at a star wars world mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because i think a lightsaber keyblade would be awesome and Imagine that's like the only reason <laughs> like instead of seth ross as seth seth Roth, the optional super villain would be lord darth vader that would be awesome man that would be so awesome plus we do technically have the right away to marvels yeah so i mean they totally could be doing a superhero world where you know just pick one you know do iron man or something oh working with iron man Whew. Uh, how, how would handle uh tony stark i feel working like they, dr strange <laughs> oh gosh like i, I imagine to- like I'm trying to think of all the witty lines that Tony Stark would say, like, come on, Goofy and Donald. He wouldn't say Goofy and Donald. He'd say, you know, dog and quackers, <laughs> Dr. Quackers, and yeah. does this the thing even talk? Yeah, okay. Uh, so I guess the last one. Oh, no, there's two Sorry. more on the list. Um, with Kingdom Hearts real quick. Yeah. Imagine him and uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Yeah. They would get along well. That'd be interesting. So? Oh, yeah, because he's kind of a... They're both kind of snarky cocky little kids and have good sense of humor it should be it would be interesting fair <laughs> enough fair enough uh speaking of spider-man i'm gonna bump down the list a little bit we do uh we did have a heck of a look at the new spider-man game what do you think of it it looks good i mean it looks like arkham asylum meets spider-man but oh we'll see we i, I just need more on the story it like, was just- combat's not too important for me I guess not, but we didn't see all that much combat. Like, combat was involved, but we didn't actually do it. It felt like at least half of the time that we saw gameplay footage, it was him pressing circle to sling web across this giant, you know, sea at this, uh, I don't know, it was like an oil drill or something like that. The raft, a high tech security prison. And, you know, we're just chasing after Captain Electro. I don't know what his name was, but some thunder and lightning guy while beaten beaten off by the vulture of all the characters which we kept webbing in the face thought it funny that the the rhino came back and yeah. you know we got reptiles so they got the like the oh. old school villains i was so upset at the cliffhanger though oh when he like turns his head and goes you Da-da. like <laughs> i i get it again building hype you want people to talk about it i hate cliffhangers in video game trailers well like there's two obvious answers right green goblin either green goblin which uh we we got to point out it doesn't have the similarities to homecoming the new spider-man movie because otherwise the vulture would be something completely different so it has to remain comic book which means either the green goblin or the hobgoblin you know the sun uh could be assisting in some way or venom venom could be another yeah, potential thing. They, they turn into an anti-hero style thing you know brock is like ah screw you the only person that can kill i was about to turn into my vegeta voice the only thing that can kill spider-man is me oh y'all can you know choke <laughs> no, in a he's bag. Mine. <laughs> yeah okay i'm sure i heard, um, I heard about it no he's okay ah uh, yes uh, i don't know god it could be it could be a lot of people i think though I'm expect. I want something like completely off the wall, though. If it's a villain, I want like oh, Thanos. <laughs> yeah, uh, you just yeah. want Thanos be hovering and like, "Hey, uh, do you got any finishing stones?" And he's like, "No, but can you help me?" Yeah, sure. That's yeah. a five minute game right there, Brandon. We can't have Thanos. I don't know. I just I don't want. I I know. I expect. Let me get my train of thought back here. I like that we have so many villains. I hope they all provide different styles to fight them. Kind of what? like how Arkham City did. Or what Arkham happens Knight. if this is like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where each one of them owns like a part of the city, and you got to go to each one and just kind of break it down piece by piece before you can take on the kingpin? It'd be boring. Yeah, it would be really boring. Also, another thing I thought of uh, the possibility of uh, Peter Parker's uh, protege or the next step in for the Miles. Yes, for Spider Man, it could be Miles as the person to help him. Double Spider Man. No, I mean, interesting. It'd be fun for multiplayer. The idea that you could have two uh, Spider-Mans that you control, you know, at different times of the game or something like that. Right. One's more on uh, melee and whatnot. The other one's like focus on sneaking. I really don't know what who would have what for style, but what I really want and, and, you know, you have to draw a lot of similarities to Arkham Knight because it's just 
that's the kind of game it is, unfortunately. And that's the game, kind of game it's probably going to be. But Not Arkham Knight, you had... Yeah, I can see that. You didn't have much randomness in your encounters. What I would really enjoy is, like, let's say you're sl- slinging around the city, right? Mm-hmm. And you see a balloon, you know, Spider-Man 2 game. You see a balloon or something they got to go get for a little kid, and you're slinging up to it, and then just at the top, or before you even get to the top, you're just all of a sudden smacked. And your character goes flying You're like what what just happened you turn around and the vultures flying towards you oh gosh like just completely random encounters like that and i would really appreciate that i could see you screaming when it happens <laughs> yeah just, that's my balloon now kid ah oh, dang it it's shooting me in the face again with more webbing and then like let's say you know that happens to you but me when i go get the balloon nothing happens and then maybe for another person they oh, land like a, a random encounter yeah. style thing yeah Imagine if they implemented like a nemesis system. Each one of those, what? I don't think I know what you're you never heard. About. Uh, sorry, Shadow of Mortar. Uh, they had a system where basically, uh, this this was a big thing a couple years ago. I'm surprised. Where basically you could fight a uh, a boss, and if you defeated it, if he would come back stronger, covering like a weak point that you were you know focusing on, <laughs> or if you know he'd be missing an eye or something like that. Or if he defeated you, he would come back and he would remember that he defeated you and he'd start taunting you for that fight and all that. And so you tried to either, you know, chase him off the, the property where he would come back either stronger than before or otherwise, you know, augmented in such a way to make it harder for you. Or you could flat out kill him. And, you know, usually killing means, you know, a, a nemesis in his place or I guess it would be a different form of <laughs> boss. So you beat a vulture by ripping off his wings or you webbed his wings so he comes back with special augmented um, mithril plated wings or something to stop you from sticking them. I seem to remember in, in Homecoming he had uh, cutters on his wings to cut the web. Ah, okay. Well, like I said, in my defense, this is yeah. comic book vulture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain yeah, Baldy. That's, that's, that would be an interesting, that would be a fun combat. Or even just like um, go on the Metal Gear route with your goons. You do too many headshots with your web slinging and all of a sudden they're wearing helmets Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know you get melee combat so they're wearing armor you do stealth too much yeah that'd be interesting speaking of metal gear solid but not quite next on the list is kojima's uh the movie turned video game style thing death stranding one of my favorite comments and this is kind of going to jump a little bit ahead but i just i appreciate this comment so much yeah was uh norman reedus and the funky fetus should be the name of the game. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <sighs> so <laughs> when you when when people ask you, all right, all right, what happened in this trailer? What information do you get? Thank you. you. You're gonna do is, this and not me because I don't know where to go with this. I don't know. Like I have no clue what's going on. The one thing that I think I gathered from it is, you know, she mentions that they fast forward time or they control time. Yeah. A lot of people think that that fetus is your respawn system. Right. So when you, you know, you get fast forward to time, your character dies, but the fetus is you. So basically in order to to continuously traverse through time, you got to live your natural life cycle, but you're also constantly cloning yourself, hopefully with your memories. So you can just keep going. But in reality, this was a five minute footage of him marching around. What looked like a, a living version of Mars. Uh, holding and wearing different shaped backpacks, just <laughs> holding a full RPG inventory. <laughs> like, yeah, no kidding. Like, just this full, like, I'm set for the mountains for the rest of my life, and I brought my entire house. And then there's a random cutscene. It's like, oh, I'm carrying a full size body for some reason that's all wrapped up, hanging on my back. Ooh, I just remembered him ripping off his toenail. And for some reason, he decided that he was going to rip oh. off a toenail. And Kojima, he loves this stuff. He he <laughs> likes to make people go WTF. I can't blame him. I mean, he finishes it by having a the woman that he was talking with, I think she bit into a bug or something like that and just sat she, there in CG just chewing. She called it something, and a lot of people were speculating that's how you create your f- next fetus. Because it looked like that. a fetus to me, but I didn't want to say that. And she just put it around. <clears throat> I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't mean god asmr chewing noises but yeah that's how i talk and i chew and it's just sitting there for like five ten seconds just chewing and then gives like this crap eating grin 
Yeah. It's like, okay, thank you, Kojima. I know, understand that there's no way to understand this, and you expect him to give $60 and pray to God that this is a decent and new <laughs> but game. But we will. <laughs> but will we? I will. Uh, <sighs> maybe. I don't know. I, I'll need to see a little bit more for it. I mean, I have bought every single Metal Gear Solid game that has come out since I discovered Metal Gear Solid. I bought four or five. Wait, is there a six one? Am I missing six? No, Phantom no. Pain. Yeah, was, well, yeah, I'm gonna say Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zero, which I bought for you for your birthday. Bless you, and then you know Phantom Pain for uh, oh man, I never beat Phantom Pain. Neither have I. I. I bought the. I think I beat the first act, but then I saw Act Two. I'm like, nope, this isn't worth it. Uh, I was sick of pointing at my horse and saying, "Do it," and you know, horse takes the crap in the ground. My solid state died because I had it installed on that. So, I'm sorry, Oops. man. So. Death Stranding, uh, that's probably the last one for Sony. How 10 do you out think? of 10. You, you really think so? Or are you just being sarcastic? For Death Stranding? Uh, well, I was going to say for Sony's uh, conference as a whole, but sure, Death Stranding. What do you think of it? Is, is this a game that you're actually going to buy? I don't know. I want to. It looks like the kind of game that would just mess with me, and I, I appreciate that. It, like it, Not like a horror game, but like a psychological... like. I, it's like in my head, it's like I have to say, well, I need to hear a storyline before I buy. It's like you do that for a Metal Gear Solid game. I dare you. Give me a solid, you know, what is the storyline for the first hour and a half of any of the Metal Gear Solid games and try to, you know, make it sound believable. You're on an island. Sure. Uh, that is the first one. You are on Shadow Moses. <laughs> you got to sneak around and don't get caught. Because there's a guy with a giant machine that's trying to cause nuclear war. Shadow Moses, you got to enter an island that is being possessed by paid for mercenaries who took over the island with backup from the Russians for some reason. Because they want to take over this nuclear factory that's on this island that's been long since de decommissioned by the U.S. So they can possess a top secret military function that's hidden underneath the ground with also the worry that there's actual nukes on site still. Some were decommissioned, spilling all over the place and all. It's like, okay, and then you can go further. Also, the main bad guy is your evil twin brother clone who wants the body of your genetic daddy that that's his terms he doesn't want money he he wants his father in a bag also uh there's a lot of cardboard box okay nintendo 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 oh all right do you want to go down my list or did you have one uh we can go down your list i'm okay with that super mario party yay another oh. way i can find a way to destroy our friendship i'm bringing that by the way mario party 2 when uh, i come up now this is going to be the day before my wedding we're probably going to make mistakes and i'm going to be hung over on my marriage i plan on it but i'm going to have at least you nick potentially david potentially joe i'll stay in the night like well we're gonna have to keep it the four david's gonna be there is he yeah i was not aware of this i mean you know, plans are being made okay anyways super mario this party is my job to plan for you okay. but anyway um super mario party I bought a DS just to play Mario Party 100. Did you really? Is, I'm so yeah. sorry. Um, because, sorry, let I me love, rephrase I love it. how your face dropped for a second. <laughs> like, Let me rephrase it. You and I bought this DS for Sun and Moon. I bought yes. a second DS so I could play Mario Party 100 with people. What happened to the first one? I still have it. The, why did you get a second one? So I could play it with people. Oh, so you basically bought two so you can hand one to another and do share play or something? Yeah. Oh, well, I... I I'm, I modded both of them, so I don't actually own the game. Um, oh, okay. Fair <laughs> um, did you know that Homebrew works on the DS, too? <laughs> I did not, but now I do. Awesome. Um, Good to know. Anyways, Super anyway, Mario Party. I have always been a Mario Party fan. I am super excited for it. I hope that there's online play, because that would be nice. Did you get to see the trailer for this? I did. Answer me one question and one question only, and then continue. Are they all in a car still, or do they move separately? It looked like they moved. Because in the last like one for the Wii U, separate. they are all traveling in a car thing. And, and I was like, garbage. yes, absolutely. It looked like they're all moving separately because I seem to remember Bowser running from a boulder by himself. And I think it was Wario getting a star. Okay. So I really I hope so. Yeah. Did you? So you saw the trailer. 
combining the switches together to create the maps for some of the mini games i did not see the trailer but now you're getting me more excited to see these trailers so it was the tank game you know where you go through and shoot the tanks yeah and each switch had on the screen you know some obstacles Mm -hmm. and so you could put the switches together this way and have you know just a box you could turn it around turn it to the side have some uh walls and stuff in it oh it looked so good for some of the games and they have you know the motion controllers make for some fun games there and i am super excited for it i'm that's a day one purchase for me okay let's see uh it will be out october 5th this mm-hmm. year so we got yes. a, a few months but at least you know i'll gain to look forward this year uh next in the list you have as uh more official announcements for pokemon let's go yeah um i was surprised it actually looked like a full game like I expected, really that's well, good to hear i expected it to be kind of like pokemon safari or um a remake of red and blue but from what they show us it looks like it has a different story even i mean it's supposed to be focused off of you know it said in the very beginning you know fans of pokemon yellow essentially uh mm-hmm. you, you'll recognize this game for what it is which we we talked about it previous on different podcasts it makes sense because you get the Pik- pikachu or eevee which is you know red and blue what's up you can't evolve your Eevee. Can you evolve the Pikachu? Probably not. Oh, uh, all right. I'm Garbage. Here. Returned, pre-ordered, canceled. Uh, Garbage. so did we get an official date for that? Um, I don't think so. I think we just got this year. Okay, uh, because I but, thought it was like November seventeenth or something like that. Oh, uh, November sixteenth. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that's. Oh, is that a light up Pikachu? Yeah. That looks awfully familiar, Brandon. Brandon, where did you get that from? McDonald's. Okay, it's, it's just weird because I know I had something very similar to that, and I know we moved and split all our stuff. I stole it from Jordan. Okay, okay, <laughs> Jordan. Okay, fair enough. He got he got um Litten, and I got Pikachu. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> well, we, we we don't need to talk about Pokemon. Let's go. We know what's yeah, it's out and what it's doing. It was uh, just on the direct, so I put it on there the 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 worst kept open secret for nintendo is that <laughs> fortnite's coming out for it came out uh, apparently we could yeah. download it and play right I now we won't because i have it on pc but so I just thought if, it was interesting if we wanted to we could play in switch uh battle rail mo- mode right now for free together yeah, yeah. wow depending on how fast your internet is mm. Mm. right now might be half an hour from now but you know Bad details. Overcooked too. Now you and I have played this game, mm-hmm. the, the, the first one, anyways, on PS4. Uh, that that was a fun game. It was hard. It was very hard because, like, it was fun at first because we we're just doing the the simple basic stuff. But then when they started introducing these hangry mice and then earthquakes, oh, the mice trucks. The yeah. moving trucks were funny. I actually really did appreciate those. So many because... times that we throw the meat or the bun over the edge in a sacrifice play just to keep the sandwich going. One more. <laughs> just like to the dramatic slowness of you falling underneath the, the tires between the two things as you're like, just take it. Um, In the trailer, they did show that um you can actually throw meat now. So like before you just kind of set it down and it threw it a little bit, but now yeah. you actually like you can chuck that thing yeah okay so um a lot more stages there was one where they were in a hot air balloon which was crashing and mm. it crashed on the ground and then they were in a kitchen so oh that really? was interesting yeah huh. oh okay and so I... everything was on fire because they crashed oh geez so they, they had to grab out. the extinguisher immediately the yeah. what needs okay sure sure uh so we got that to look forward to uh octopath traveler now we saw a demo for that last year i believe right after or during e3 so mm-hmm. uh, we got to see project over octopath you know turn into this game is coming out july 13th yes now is this a game that you're actually interested in playing or is I this am. Some- i actually really enjoyed the demo and i'm going to download the new demo in a couple weeks when it comes out it's so weird that they're you know announcing a second new demo of the player i mean mm-hmm. before it, it, it was Okay. It's like it was like alpha now this is beta essentially what i'm thinking they'll do is for the first trailer you had the dancer and the soldier to play as so yeah. i'm sure they'll have just two new people that you can play as for this one okay and so 
I'm excited. I actually really enjoyed it. It's got a lot of old fashioned Final Fantasy vibes to it. No like, kidding, dude. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate 15 and even 12 and 10 and all that, but six, seven, and eight, the time based systems. You know, finding out which combinations of materia and attacks give you the best results. I, I am jumping to the side here. I need to ask you to know right now, uh, Sony is currently having something called Days of Play for the PS4. Yes. They have Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition for 30 bucks. Is that worth buying? I enjoyed watching Connor play it. That, that's not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> I couldn't get into playing it myself. They did fix a lot of the mistakes with combat. If you, with your experiences, you know what to expect, and you didn't have the game, would you buy it for 30 bucks? Probably. I mean, I so. honestly, I think Amanda would like it more than you. Really? But she, because it's got a lot of hack and slash elements to it. That's true, but she hates, there, there's no, like, who can she relate to? Noctis? I'm, I'm sad and angry. Me too. She would like no. Them. Who do you think she'd like? Gladio. Just the Gladio. big buff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. The big buff guy with a heart uh, of gold. This didn't get uh, mentioned too much. I'm just going to bring these up uh, points. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is getting some DLC. Don't care. So uh, there's that. Uh, Fire Emblem, Three Houses. Oh, yeah. That's one I did forget. That's one that you did forget. It's coming out in that's spring fun. 2019. I like how they turned it from... See, I was worried it was going to be like Fire Emblem Warriors, yeah. but it, it looks like it's a Fire Emblem game where instead of one person attacking, you have the entire army attacking, but you still only treat it as one entity. And so I it's really gonna, like, a much larger scale, essentially? Yeah, so like instead of one person moving, it's 100, but you treat it as one block of enemies. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. And so think of it like... um going from 10 health in civilization to 100 that's i mean i really do like my individual or individualism because that's where i can focus more on my waifu characters but i suppose that could work out well that's what the characters the waifu characters and you know the husband characters control each of the armies so essentially they're a, like a general of this given unit and that's right. their strength alongside and you control them. you control the general and yeah so it's their added strength and their health it sounds so like, like a single unit version of Advance Wars at yeah, this point. Kind of. Yeah, it it I, looks fun. It looks exciting, and they always have good stories. It's still sad because uh, the last. I mean, I've played and beaten Fire Emblem Awakening, mm -hmm. which took forever, by the way. But Did you have to do it like three times? Uh, there, there's so much you had to do. Like, I was having children with people I didn't know, and Magic Future children kept coming. It was scary, man. Uh, but I, I played Path of Radiance to completion on the GameCube, but then you had Radiant Dawn for the Wii, which I never got to complete. And it's still eating me to this day that I didn't get to complete it. For the Wii? For the Wii. And then you have, uh, good luck finding it legally, by the way. You know, like the cheap copies are like a hundred bucks minimum, unless you, know, you go to uh, freaking uh, goodwillauction.com or whatever the heck it's called. The Dream right. Big, right? Oh man, I spent way too much money on that website. Fire Emblem Three House is a game. Three Houses is a game. I know I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna immediately regret that I don't have enough time for it. Like I swear, the only <laughs> way I'm gonna be able to beat this game is if I become jobless. Which I mean, it's in spring 2019. I work a seasonal job. I can actually kind of see this going the wrong way here. But it's also maybe near my birthday. A lot of these games are coming out February 22nd, three days before my birthday. Really uh, interesting. Can't wait to make a, a wish list. Uh, Hollow Knight, uh, a game that I didn't know too much about. Apparently, it's coming out on Switch. It's fun. It's out now. Yeah. So it's fun, but I've already beaten it on my computer. So, uh, do we know who uh, made it? Hollow Knight. Yeah. Hollow Studios. Um, I was gonna it's say it's the same people that like Shovel Knight or something because no, well, it doesn't no. have that style. No. It has a nice uh, cartoony style that reminds me almost almost of uh, Cuphead. Yeah, a little bit. It has that uh, artistic it's, it's feel. It's definitely a fun um, Metroidvania game. Okay. Like, it is. Those are always fun. Well, we probably should jump into the big one. Oh, I've got to get going. Uh, Do you? Yeah. Because I got to go pre-order Super Smash Brothers. Oh, man, forever. you scared me. Don't scare me with this <laughs> drivel crap. Uh, gotta go pre-order <sighs> Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm so excited. 
Are you? I am. I am so glad that you're excited because I I got some bitterness with this game, man. I got Why? some beef. Okay. Picture me. I have a little game called Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Had it for a very, very long time. You right. know how many times I played it since I bought it? Uh, when we played it at the house with those GameCube controllers? We, we bought the game, then we bought the GameCube controller adapters, and then I played it like two more times after that. Because nobody was willing to play with me first off, because nobody knew it either existed or wanted to challenge me, which I can't blame them. But at the same time, I never had any interest in playing it because nobody else wanted to talk about or playing it. And granted, I did not buy it when it came out, like maybe a year and a half after it came out, because it didn't seem like that hot of a title. Like it was huge competitive wise, especially for right. you know Twitch and all that. But no friend of mine has ever talked about playing Super Smash Brothers. And it's weird because it has such a huge childhood stigma attached to it. You know, I love Super Smash Brothers, but I don't play it anymore. Right. It, it's not because I hate it. It's because, oh, it's, maybe it's because people get hyped up for it. Like, I bet you, I would say 25% of the people that are hyped up for this game will not play it more than three to five hours. I'm going to. I mean, there's no way to prove yeah. the statistic, but it's like, it's one of those games where people are going to buy because they're so hyped up. They're going to play it for a good few days we you made with their friends, maybe one good solid night, a good few hours. But then as soon as everybody's gone and the hype dies down, like, when's the last time you played Splatoon? Uh, before I lost my Joy-Cons. I mean, to me, it's like, I could easily play Splatoon, but I just didn't, like... I was kind of getting an adjustment for this vibe based off uh, Mario Aces or mm-hmm. Mario Tennis Aces because it's another online multiplayer game that people can easily get into and have a good fun. Problem is, though, everybody that I keep hearing that want you know played it and had interest into it died immediately. Maybe yeah. not necessarily because of the internet issues details, but at the same time, people are like, "Oh, this is too complicated. This is too hard." And it's like it's supposed to be fun, but it's a fighting game with rackets. Now. Fast forward to this, we get all the games that people love playing with all these cute characters, plus Ridley. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Which, you know, everybody was excited for since the GameCube. They've been demanding freaking Meta Ridley to come in. <laughs> then Waluigi, which I'm sorry, I kind of wish they put Waluigi he's in. A, as a trophy. Yeah, he, he put him his in. part in the game. He's uh, he's uh, a summonable character for three seconds. When Yoshi ate Luigi. In it yeah. and it went dark. I thought they were going to tease Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah, like it goes for a split second and you hear and it just cuts out immediately. That's oh, all that you would, need. That would be a good t- evil tease. Uh, very impressed at the fact that they were able to keep almost every single character from Wii U. They put more. every character in the game ever that was released into it. It's just so impressive that they're able to bring all these people back because. We missed some of these characters. I missed my solid snake. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was Mewtwo in the last one. He wasn't. Yeah, they took him out, and so you know the idea that they brought him back. They made Ganondorf back into uh, what looks like Ocarina of Time Ganondorf. Although I'm sure mm-hmm. there's probably a cool sweet skin for only three ninety nine, where you can make him look like Twilight Princess or something again. Uh, um, I did give a. <laughs> Kirby is there. I know I gave my rant. I'm probably going to still buy this game, but I'm going to be bitter about it because I'm going to predict it now. I I swear that I will put at least 10, 15 hours enjoying this game, opening characters up, trying to play, you know, maybe the the subspace emissary, play with you, hopefully. The number one Smash player in the world. Okay, let's not get too crazy here. But after that, I am going to take a look at all my friends on my friends list. How, you know, it's going to show me who bought it mm-hmm. and then it's going to show me how much they played it. And if they have, you know, my predicted amount of, you know, th- you know five hours or maybe even 10 hours at most, it's like, that's it. That's all they're going to do. Maybe they'll bring it back up because it's like, we don't have time. We don't have friends. What are friends? Friends and time in the same place at that for a Venn diagram. That is two separate circles, Brandon. Let me say something, though. Go ahead. One thing that I'm really excited about this is it's on the Switch. That's true. I can go to work at the hotel on the downtime and play it. 
or bring it to you know i i have a couple parties that i go here every once in a while bonfires and stuff just bring it by play smash with people i'm excited for that portable smash pretty much i mean i've got it on the ds but i mean that is true a lot of things with uh mario kart which i do still play that could be a good exception to this whole rule is i do enjoy the idea of bringing it and playing with other people Mm -hmm. granted the screen is so tiny that it's terrible but you know we don't Imagine have that. eight person smash on that screen. <laughs> I mean, playing Super Smash Bros. on it, it would be hard to see. But really, if you saw a green dot and you know you're playing as Link, you don't need to really worry about it. Like you can see a glowing Falcon Punch on this tiny three by three pixel and know what to do. Right. And if not, then you need right. to get good. Um, you need to get good, Brandon. I played Jigglypuff. Okay. Yeah, you did. That's right. I still remember the one last time we played was over at that Japanese arcade thing over at the Columbus Mall. And you tried Jigglypuffing against my, I believe it was Zelda. Sheik? And, uh, Zelda. Yeah, it was Zelda and Sheik. Uh, right? It was originally, I played Sheik, but then I switched to Zelda because I realized uh, Zelda could easily counter Jigglypuff. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I, I just kind of felt bad because it didn't go in your favor. If, it felt weird because if I had the pick, I would have loved to have been much better at Dragon Ball Fighter Z and beat you <laughs> at that, then still be like, well, not still, but actually be able to beat you definitively in certain player versus player fight matchups. And right. I'm I'm not proud. I'm not actually that good. <laughs> it's just oh, I don't fuck. I don't know. Yeah, almost not quite. Almost. It's hard. Um, but yeah, everybody's in it. Uh, I did you see the um? I think they called them Omega stages. Omega stages, no. Basically, you know, it's Final Destination as a stage, but you have it with every stage design. So, like, let's say you really like the Breath of the Wild stage that they're putting in. Yeah. You can have a Final Destination stage with that stage design in it. Oh, so okay. Like, is it nice. just going to take a, a small portion of it, or? It just recolors the Final Destination with that. Oh, okay. So there, It's interesting. So, it should be fun for uh, competitive, of course. Now, I basically saw a trailer that showed all the characters for the most part, except for Ridley for some reason. Uh, did we see any, like, uh, did you see anything like Pokeball throwing or whatnot? Yep, there's Pokeballs. They have, uh, they showed uh, Beware and uh, Solgaleo, or Sogaleo. There you um, go. So they have new Pokemon for that, new items. They have, like, a black hole item, which was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, uh, any little floating landmines to shoot in giant axes? Yeah, well, no. Great. Um, no, they had bad. Bomberman as an assist trophy, and he really? put a bomb on the stage, and it shoot it, you know, out and up and down. <laughs> a cross is close enough to an X, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is there anything else? Uh, I mean, we're excited for this. I'm bitterly excited. You're uh, hyped, excited. We can use our GameCube controllers on it. Yes. Are we? Are we talking about the ones that we uh, used no, for? We can't uh, use those. Because those are Bluetooth, weren't they? Uh, they were Bluetooth, yes. Yeah, they've got to be wired, but you could buy a USB wired controller. That is true. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's already been showing that people have, I think it was third party, are making uh wired GameCube controllers for the Switch. So, mm -hmm. yay. But I, I don't trust wired controllers. Wired controllers mean they can build it cheap, and they're going to build it as cheap as possible. And I just don't trust wired controllers anymore, you man. You don't have to buy it cheap. No, no. Can you, can you buy you a buy hundred dollar one if you want. Do you buy it free? Oh, I'm gonna need to if I want to beat you. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how many hours I can get into it before we play together. Okay. We're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna get like an hour and a half, and then you'll be like, "All right, let's play." Yeah. Uh, a couple other games coming out for the Switch. Uh, Damon X uh, Machina, mm. uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is actually coming out for the Switch. Yeah. Uh, SNK Heroes Tag Team Frenzy, and uh, you know there was a bunch of other third-party uh, titles and ports. I'm not going to talk about. Uh, was there any games on the list here that you're hoping to get announced that just didn't quite make it? I don't know. I didn't even think about that. No, Final Fantasy VII remake. But did we get any talk about Metroid Prime Four? Oh, we didn't. No, no, not at all. Not that I'm aware of. Any, you know, we didn't, no. get, they didn't even show the. Uh, I didn't even anime. mention it. That that's dark, man. Like. Because honestly, I thought they're going to talk more about it and then introduce for the Switch a uh, Metroid Prime trilogy. We get to play the first three. Like it. Especially would, if it was remade, remastered. I mean, it would have to definitely be upscaled a little bit, upgraded. Yeah. 
especially considering the GameCube one was in 4.3, but uh, actually the first, well, first two were for GameCube, so we'd have to switch that to widescreen, otherwise we'd have, well, I'm not going to fat shame Samus. Uh, <laughs> wide Samus. Uh, I'd like to shame Samus. Yeah, okay, whatever, dude. Jeez. <laughs> PT-13 podcast. No, I mean, that's a PG-13 film. We talked about Detroit Become Human, so I, I can't yeah. go in detail on that. Uh, is there anything that you wish was announced for uh, Sony? No. I can't. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3 was the big one for me. I'm just glad we got some more footage of it. It's amazing because in this situation, I came in with zero expectations, and I got exactly what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. The- E3 as a whole. On a scale of one to ten, how do you feel like it was compared to the other E3s of later years? I mean, it was definitely better than two years ago. Two years ago, okay. They were they were locked in. Maybe it was three years ago. They were they had conference rooms, and it was just like eight people in the conference room of news people, hmm. and so there weren't any big shows like this. Last year's was kind of disappointing too. Not very many big announcements, although we did have um, some Switch stuff. I guess, yeah, Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey was the big thing for Nintendo then. Where right. if you uh, stand it, or stood in line at E3, you got to hear that song that they play at uh, New Donk City over and over. That's yeah. sung by the uh, the lady there. So, I enjoy that. What's that? I haven't beaten Odyssey. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I tried. Like I was like, man, I actually really liked Odyssey. I'm gonna keep playing it because after beating, it, I was like, okay, uh, I unlocked the first world you get to do after you beat the game. Mm-hmm. Tried it will never complete that never i like i tried playing like no so much bull crap things going on there i I will never touch that and maybe i'll collect more moons i will not be doing any more worlds beyond that i'm happy the worlds i got balloon world but balloon world you know you and luigi's got a thing Ooh, that would have been nice to have uh luigi's mansion for the switch announcement would have been cool that would have been nice it would have been good I mean, I always secretly pray to the Nintendo gods for a Pokemon Snap game, but honestly, let's we got we had so much Pokemon news that there's no way. Right. I mean, they they, they have Pokemon Quest for goodness sakes. I, I can't I can't expect them to do more Pokemon. Well, Mystery guess, Dungeon would have been fun on the Switch too. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I feel like if they did Mystery Dungeon, they would have said for the 3DS. Don't no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, we need to let that Nintendo. die. Um, but yeah, overall, not a bad E3. We gotta wait a couple months for anything fun, but that's how it goes. Yeah. Christmas season. Yeah, oh, I mean, E3, the Christmas of video games, it's over finally. Thank goodness, too. Let it burn. Dead. Oh, gosh. Death Stranding. This is, this is a Death Stranding scenario right now. Time to go eat one of those bugs, I guess. Oh, gosh. Okay. I don't know where I can find it. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this show up? Uh, I don't want to go to work tonight. <laughs> don't worry, me neither. That's about it. I, I got to get up at 4.30, so I, I get to shit this one out as soon as I can. But yeah. I guess that's going to be it for this episode of uh, the side quest of Casual Master Quest. Thank you for listening to myself. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at 2 times Tyler. Brandon, can we find you anywhere on the internet? Or are you still no, hidden in the shadows? I'm pretty well hidden. Okay, fine. Uh, if you want to <laughs> talk to him, you got to get through me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can just give him my phone number. Okay. Uh, your phone number is, uh, I don't know. I'm still I was, bitter. I, that. I didn't know if you knew it or not. Nope. I definitely don't. Uh, in fact, I after I got a new, uh, I got a same phone number, got a new phone, lost your contact. Notice I keep messaging you on Facebook. I texted you. Did you? I, uh, yeah, must have, <laughs> no. Hold uh, on. I'm gonna... Why do you have a Princess Zelda poster over this $70 poster I uh, made for you? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? You got Princess Zelda over this giant three foot by five foot poster behind you. Not over it. It's just not. Oh, okay. It's over to the side. Oh, it's forgiven. Disregard me. I was just having a jealous best friend moment. No, uh, I got to see what I texted you. Oh, I texted. Yeah. I said, I can't say it on stream what I said. Okay. I said, hey, baby, want some? And then you sent the link picture of heavy breathing. Oh, okay. Uh, great. Anyways, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will see you preferably sometime uh, next Monday on the actual mainstream podcast going on where Nick, Cam, and I will team back up to officially talk about everything on E3 as a whole. And don't forget to never stop the grind. See you guys. Bye.